Okay everyone, so now that we've downloaded our Ubuntu operating system, it's time to use VirtualBox to open up, uh, sorry, to build a virtual machine. Now, some of you might be asking, why are we using virtual machines instead of real machines? The answer, well, in a lab environment, it's always good to have a virtual machine rather than physical machine because I can simply, if I want to, I can clone the machine, I can delete it and then just start again. And two, of course, cost, cost savings. In a lab, I can have two or three servers. Could you imagine uh, without this technology, you'd have to have two or three physical servers. Now, if you choose to use physical servers, that's fine. Everything that we're doing uh, in these videos, you can do in a physical server. With the exception of um, one part, which I'll point out to you in a second here. So now we have VirtualBox open in your ISO. The first thing in VirtualBox that you will do is click New. And now it'll say Name and Operating System. So you can do Ubuntu Website Lab. Okay, and now it automatically pretty much selects it for you. It knows that Ubuntu is Linux and the version, it doesn't really matter what version you're running as long as it's Ubuntu. Then click next. Now you'll see here where it says how much RAM do you want to uh, allocate. Now if you have one gig of RAM, you might only be able to afford uh, half of that RAM because you can select too much or else your actual operating system or your computer might become unstable. In this case, I have eight gigs of RAM, so I can go ahead and select uh, 124 megabytes, which is one gigabyte of um, data, or sorry, one gigabyte of RAM. So you can hit next, and it'll say create a virtual hard drive. Okay, we want to do that, so hit, click create, and then select the default option, VDI, hit next, and dynamically allocated and click next as well now you'll see where it says how big of a hard drive we want eight gigabytes is just enough so what we want is to have more than just enough so i normally recommend 25 gigabytes okay so once you have 25 gigabytes just click create and now the virtual machine is created okay now to now what we want to do is click on the machine, click settings, and edit one uh, one setting here. So come down and click network. And then normally it'll say attach to NAT. We actually want to hit bridge adapter and then name ethel zero uh, or um, you'll have local area connection whatever adapter connects to your inter uh, connects your computer to your home network or to the internet okay and once you do that then just click ok and you can go up and click start which will boot up the machine now this is the difference uh, for um, uh, the physical server you won't have to do any of this because you're doing uh, obviously a physical server after this point everything else is the same now for those of you who are using the virtual machine click on the little folder here click the folder where your um, click the folder where your file is located in my case is desktop click the ISO and click open then click start Okay, this will boot up the machine with the with the CD in it. So we want to hit enter to select English and then install Ubuntu server. Just hit enter. Okay, you have some text that will show up as the server is booting up. Okay, so we'll hit English, United States, and if it says detect keyboard layout, just hit no. 
English US English US And as the install says, it'll just load some additional files. At this point, there's nothing you really have to do yet. Okay, now it's going to try to attempt to get an IP address from your network. Now, at the host name, um, I normally put Ubuntu dash lab dash web. This way I can uh, name it uh, a, a certain name so I know what I'm logged into when I'm logged into it. And then hit enter. You can even choose to leave a Ubuntu if you want. Okay. Now it'll ask us to create a user. So I'll just put Sean. And then for a password, you just create, you have to create a password. Now, um, the recommended password is eight characters long, has a uh, capital letter and a number and a special character. Okay. Now, password, password maintenance or password uh, management is definitely one of the very first steps in security. You don't want to have a password that says ABC123. That's very insecure. Also, you don't want to have dictionary uh, passwords such as tiger, um, car, uh, stuff like that. Because the problem is they are known or those passwords can be easily cracked by what's called the dictionary attack. What a dictionary attack is, is where literally we take the whole all the words in the dictionary and then put it through an application that tries to brute force the password to attempt to guess it and gain access to your server, which is not what you want. So again, the best password is eight, eight characters long, one, at least one capital, one number and a special character. And once you've done that, click yes and uh, encrypt your home directory. Uh, for the lab, you can say no. Okay and um, say that the time zone is correct so say yes and now it'll go ahead and go through some process here okay so now you'll say use entire disk <coughs> guided use entire disk okay because this is the only operating system on this uh, machine do we want to write the changes say yes Okay, so now it'll go through the, in the install, and for time purposes, I'll just pause this video, and uh, we'll continue once uh, once it asks for more information. Okay, so we're at the next set of prompts here. Now it'll ask, um, do we do we need a uh, proxy? Now, the majority of people don't use proxies, and if you do, you'll have to enter it here. But for the most part, you should be able to just hit continue. Okay, now what it's doing is downloading certain, uh, because it has internet access, it'll download certain packages that um, that we need. Okay, so I'll just wait until the next, uh, the next time it's asked for some more data, and then uh, I'll unpause the video. Okay, so now you get to this part where it's asking you what services and stuff you want installed. Now, I would normally um, just hit LAMP because, if, as I mentioned before, we'll need LAMP to make our most of our websites work, and in our case, WordPress. But I'm not going to do that. For the sake of the learning process, we're going to install LAMP manually because I think it's a basic requirement for you to know how to install LAMP manually. That way, when this option is not around or for some reason it's not working, you know what to do. Now, uh, the one thing you will do is hit open SSH server. Okay. That way we have remote access to our box 
and then just hit continue and then that way it'll go ahead and download the uh, all the files that we need for our servers to work okay, and I will pause the video and be back as soon as it needs more info okay and now one of the last pieces of information that the installer will ask you is if you want to install the grub bootloader I always say yes now it is actually not rec not required if Ubuntu is the only operating system on your computer but I always say yes because you never know when you're gonna need it and it doesn't take up a lot of room and uh, it's pretty it's one of those pieces of software that it just works now we're done so just hit to continue which will now have the server has been re has been installed and now is just going to reboot one last time all right and now our server has been installed okay so that's it for this section um, next section we're going to do is going to learn a little bit of terminology that the Linux operating system uses and uh, we're going to learn a little bit about Linux before we actually start using it that way it's a bit of e it's easier for you to learn and uh, instead of just being thrown into uh, thrown into Linux so I'll see you soon